Last week we had a celebration of uh, God's faithfulness, like 13 years of KDM. And, uh, and by the time, I, I think we still can afford a few more chairs we can bring in. Maybe there are a few seats here. Nikita, you can bring more chairs from. Does anybody need a British trans, uh, translation? Are you fine? Okay, so good. So uh, last week, uh, last week we had our celebration of God's faithfulness. Uh, we celebrate our 13th birthday, and my wife and I we both forgot to mention something. So um, in June 11th. Uh, June 11th, we're going to have the banquet here in this place. Ooh. And the banquet, it's not going to be for everyone. Ooh. But you can still get to the banquet. I will tell you how. So we, have a, we decided that we want to uh, celebrate all the people who gave their hearts, time, prayers, finances to, do, to the blessed uh, you amazing nation of Ukraine for the last uh, almost three months we we've been serving praying and helping Ukraine in many many ways so if you are the one who who volunteer or in any kind of way maybe you pray or maybe you give or maybe you were a driver or maybe you receive Ukraine or maybe you're still going there or maybe you're planning to go to tomorrow with Pastor Josiah on the some you're not going to tomorrow okay so but you can go still uh, so so if you are a part of this, please make, mark this in your calendar. We want to have a banquet where we're going to have food, which means it's going to be more than the carrot and hummus, Jordan. So we will have a few more things for those who eat more than the carrot and hummus. So, uh, so that's, please make sure that you just come and we want to celebrate you, your, your heart. We want to celebrate, you know, everything that you give because, you know, because of people like you, we can do even more. And there is a time that we can actually, you know, slow, maybe not slow, but maybe we just can I look at one another and say, like, thank you. Just thank you for your heart. Thank you for just being what Jesus asked us to be. So just make sure that you're going to be here. You know, an hour ago, my wife decided it's going to be at 6 p.m. I have no idea why she decided that hour. But maybe I can say, let's do it 4 p.m. Okay. So come at a time and we'll see <laughs> who was right and who was wrong. So we'll see. There's a competition. It's on. Now, on the Ukrainian service, I'm going to make another hour. So that's going to be fun. Uh, all right. Uh, we are in the series that uh, it's called, we talk about the authority. And the series in English, it's called Step In. Okay, KDM. On, Friday, on Thursday, I got the phone call from a pastor who lives in Germany and speaks only Russian. And he wants to talk to me. And I'm like, do you speak English? No. Do you speak Polish? No. I'm like, I can understand some Russian. So, but we're not going to have this conversation because I can, miss up, uh, I can misunderstand so many things. So, so you need to find someone who will trans translate. So that's why we are in few, three languages. So that's why I'm confused uh, on translation. If you live in Poland for a few years, you will find out that the movies, uh, when they translate the title of the movie, it's sometimes it's totally, totally different. Totally different. So step in. So we talk about the authority. We want to, uh, you know, talk about what does it mean to have the authority from God and how we as a Christian, we should understand and live under the authority and like how we should walk with authority. Right? Okay. So KDM again. Two rows are doing good. The last six are horrible. So. In this church, we talk. So I talk, you just can say, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yes, amen. Or if you are Ukrainian from Kiev, you can say, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, I mean, twice. I mean, I mean. So if you are American, you can say, amen, Pastor Pritchett. Uh, bring it on. And if you are British, you don't do, you just, you're like, you're like Polish. You just uh, can't read it. <laughs> So I, by, by this, I will like, check the nationality who is in this room. Uh, 
So, uh, and I lost myself. So, so we, we're going to talk about authority. You know, and for me, learning the authority is absolutely, it took a, a years and it's still taking many years. And I remember, you know, when I, when I grew up, the authority was totally different. But then, you know, uh, when I was 18, the, the change came to Poland. There was like now, my wife, before she talks about lots of historical stuff. So I need to, I need to educate you as well. So, so then you have uh, two things. You need to guess how old I am and when was it. So when I was 18, uh, the, the changes came. The iron uh, wall collapsed. And the, the west, there was still electricity. No, we have already electricity. And there was the... the the burning, the wall was, uh, was, was just opening. And what was interesting, like in Poland, we already have the Solidarity Movement, the uh, Lech Wałęsa, so we might know more about the history. And then we already start to learn what the history and freedom means. And then when the, the wall in Berlin start to collapse, then we start to see that for the first days, we start to see the flooding of Eastern Germans going to Czech Republic, Czechoslovakia at that time, and Poland and Hungary. And what was happening, they were not just entering the country, but they were, all of them, they were going to the capitals of the country. So they were going to Prague, they were going to Warsaw, they were going to Budapest. Why they were going to those countries? Because the goal for them was to reach the nearest Western German embassy so they can get there as soon as possible. So they were not allowed to go to the west, but they already were allowed to go to the east. And they were crossing the border. And the first thing, what we have on the news, you have the eastern Germans like climbing and jumping over the western German uh, embassy so they could get there. Why did that happen? Because they, were, they, they knew there is such an international law that as soon as you cross the place, the gate, that you're actually entering a different country. So you're in the embassy and there is a different rules. Even the embassy is a different country. The rules of the particular embassy just are different as well. So they were entering to this Western German embassy as soon as possible. And there were people who were helping them to jump. And there was this something that I started to learn that there is a, something different about being ambassador and, be, have, and having a place called embassy. And that's something what I want to talk to, to you and myself as well. That, you know, we are, I believe we are called to be the, the kingdom ambassadors. And that's our calling. And I wanted to explain a few things what I understood. And there's something that I have to learn. The thing is that we all have to learn things. Do you know that? Yeah. And the, the other truth is that sometimes to, in the order to learn something, you have to relearn. Or can, is there a British English word like unlearn? Unlearn some of the ways that you used to think or do to learn a new ways. So I grew up in the, Catholic, in the Catholic, that's right, in the communist country as well. And I have to relearn and unlearn, unlearn things so actually I could receive something that was called democracy. The same in the kingdom of God. There is so many things we have to unlearn so we can actually enter the kingdom. Because to be an ambassador, there is a few things you need to know. You just cannot say like, Mr. President, pick me. <laughs> so that's like presidents coming like, excuse me, I'm here. Who would like to be ambassador of Poland in some country? Like, oh, okay, I can go there. Pick me. Who wants to be ambassador in Russia? Just, just do this right now. Anybody? Okay, just checking. Uh, <laughs> so... So you can't just do it. So you need to know the government. You need to be a part of the government. So you need to have in the certain position that they can be sent. Because when you are sent, you are not sent as you yourself. You are actually sent and you carry the authority of the sender. So that's why when you go, you not go like with your name. You have your, still your name, but actually there is the whole authority behind you. Then you go. So it's not the, the, the government, if it's wise, this is a good thing. If there is a wise government, the wise government put the wise people as ambassadors so they can represent the country in a good way. So 
But as I said, we need to unlearn. I find out maybe you watch something. I would like to show you something, uh, some short movie. It's, it's totally funny. You have to go to the YouTube and watch the whole thing. It's like seven minutes. We're not going to do it in the seven minutes. But I wanted to see you. There is a guy who actually, he's, he's a mature guy, and he is a very good biker. But he decided that someone fixed the bike, and he did something different, and he had to learn again how to ride the bike. So if we are ready, why, why don't we watch this uh, movie? You've heard people say it's just like riding a bike, meaning it's really easy and you can't forget how to do it, right? But I did something. I did something that damaged my mind. It happened on this. This is not a radio. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it's me, Destin. Welcome back to Smarter Every Day. You've heard people say it's just like riding a bike, meaning it's really easy and you can't forget how to do it, right? But I did something. I did something that damaged my mind. It happened on the streets of Amsterdam, and, and I got really scared, honestly. I, I can't ride a bike like you can anymore. Before I show you the video of what happened, I, I need to tell you the backstory. Like many six-year-olds with a MacGyver mullet, I learned how to ride a bike when I was really young. I had learned a life skill and I was really proud of it. Everything changed though when my friend Barney called me 25 years later. Where I work, the welders are geniuses and they like to play jokes on the engineers. He had a challenge for me. He had built a special bicycle and he wanted me to try to ride it. He had only changed one thing. When you turn the handlebar to the left, the wheel goes to the right. When you turn it to the right, the wheel goes to the left. I thought this would be easy, so I hopped on the bike, ready to demonstrate how quickly I could conquer this. And here he is, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Destin Sandlin. First attempt riding the bicycle. All right. So, the faster I go, the better. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I sure. couldn't do it. You can see that I'm laughing, but I'm actually really frustrated. In this moment, I had a really deep revelation. My thinking was in a rut. This bike revealed a very deep truth to me. I had the knowledge of how to operate the bike, but I did not have the understanding. Therefore, knowledge is not understanding. Look, I know what you're probably thinking. Destin's probably just an uncoordinated engineer and can't do it. But that's not the case at all. The algorithm that's associated with riding a bike in your brain is just that complicated. Think about it. Downwards force on the pedals, leaning your whole body, pulling and pushing the handlebars, gyroscopic precession in the wheels. Every single force is part of this algorithm. And if you change any one part, it affects the entire control system. I do not make definitive statements that often. But I'm telling you right now, you cannot ride this bicycle. Okay, so let's finish. Can, then you but just... you can't. I know hey! <laughs> Stay with me. <laughs> During the offering, we're going to put this movie on. Um, so what, what happened, I think, with the later, I would maybe be quicker than the movie. So the guy actually proved that no one can ride the bike, this one, the opposite bike. And we all, he's like, we, I travel the world. I have so many people. I give them money. No way. Seriously, no way. There's like people are like so bright that even the pastor Philip, there's no way. Like I know that in this room there's always one person, and he came in, there's always Pastor Philip. He's like, I know that nobody but that's me. Even you. So so then even if even, even Pastor Philip wouldn't ride a bike. So then what this guy did, he said it took him eight months to un, to learn, to unlearn, and then they learn how to ride that bike. Eight months months every day he was training himself to actually to ride that bike so to, after that he actually proved it then his child he was younger when he was younger he could learn easier and faster it took him only three weeks to learn he still had to learn but it took him he was already riding the bike but it took him only three weeks because he was young there was not so many things in his brain that he had to unlearn so that's why it was faster for, for him. What was interesting, that when this guy learned how to ride that bike, he couldn't ride the normal bike. He went, you go, and I'm pretty much like, you're not allowed to turn off the Wi-Fi because everybody now is like watching the, the movie. It's like on the YouTube. Uh, so he went on the bike, normal bike. He couldn't do it. The people like look at him like, are you crazy? And said, no, seriously, I can't. He, it, you know, it took him another sometimes, it was faster, but he has to learn again to use the normal bike. Why I'm sharing this with you? Because there is so many truth, and that's what he even said, that the knowledge, it's not enough. 
We can know that we are ambassadors of God. We can know that there is so many things. There are so many things for us. But we need to unlearn the old ways and learn the new ways. You know, there are things that we sometimes we say like, hey, oh, we need to be like the ambassadors of this country. You know, think that we all trying to be like heaven. But we need to bring his law to the earth. So, so we have ambassadors because we want to learn the, the heaven's ideas and we bring what we understand to, to the earth. That's why we have this idea of the kingdoms on the kings and the ambassadors. But the, the, the pure version of ambassador is actually comes from heaven. That's why we, even when we pray, your kingdom come. We are not asking for the earthly kingdom. We're coming for his kingdom to come. And we need to be ambassadors of his kingdom. So, dear friends, that's why we need to make sure that we unlearn the old ways. We need to unlearn how we did things, how we believed, and how we, you know, think the church exists. Because we all have this. I have this. That's why I said, like, I have my ways of thinking. I knew how the church should look. And then I have a question. Who told you? Who told you that your church, the worship or something else, or the church, like the service, should look like? Who told you, like, you as ambassador should be like, do you think that you are Christian on those Sundays? That before, like, just on the other street, you were yelling at people, but then you enter this building and you're super happy. Then you leave and you carry the conversation. You know, when we moved to Krakow to plant that church, I was a challenge. Because God put in my heart that we as a Christian, we should be the blessing. And that God wants to bless the city because of us. How crazy and brave idea is that? And then you think, I don't know friends who said that. Then I start praying and I start even like calling myself. You know, I decided that people can call you names. Do you know that? They call you the names. So what I decided, I decided I'm going to call myself the names. Like seriously. So if, if I, you know, have the, you know, decision to make, if I ask Jordan to call me the names or myself, I would pick myself. So I start calling myself, you are the bishop of the city. Whoa. Why did I do that? Because I start to believe that as ambassador, I have things, I have authority, so I can carry the authority, and then it's not because of me, but because of him. And it was so hard in the beginning, so I had to, for months and years, I have to unlearn what I've been taught. So I have unlearned things that even I thought of myself and the names that people spoke of me, I have to unlearn so I can actually start to agree what the Bible teach me about authority, what what does it mean to carry authority, what does it mean to be a Christian, what does it mean to bring his kingdom to the earth. Guess what? Then I find out that actually this is biblical. Whoa, that's a shocking news in the church especially. So in Luke, the chapter 10, we, we read when Jesus sent uh, his disciples. The Luke chapter, chapter 10. After these things, the Lord appointed 70 others also and sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. Then he said to them, the harvest truly is great, but the labors are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send our labors into his harvest. Go your way. Behold, I'll send you as the lambs among wolves. Carry neither money back. And we know that that, maybe you know the story that he said, like, you know, you don't need to carry. I am with you. You go and you carry my authority. Then later this, in this chapter, we, we read that 70 verse. Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, Even the demons are subjected to us in your name. Jesus sent the disciples and the other people, 70, and and then they they coming back and said, they're a shock. Because they're like, Jesus, even them demons are listening. They're after your authority. They're listening to me. They start to unlearn what does it mean to carry authority. So they came and they start to be, you know, celebrating. The amazing things start to happen if you believe. So they start to healing people. They start to pray. The people like just really been like, you know, sending free. 
And then we read like later, that actually another time they went and we, we know that when they pray for someone, nothing happened. And they're like, Lord, what, what happened? And he said like, oh, people are a little faith. They were on the process, on the process of unlearning and the old ways and learning in new ways. So in the, the beginning, I think, I wouldn't like that one because when you go to the new bike, immediately you fall. I am the guy who actually gets excited for the at least few seconds. So you can have like, you know, I did it. So let's keep going. So, so Jesus showed them things are possible. But then you need to unlearn the old ways and step into the authority I'm giving you. And walk in, in my new ways. Because if you, check this out. If you learn the new ways, it will be hard to go back to the old ways. It's like with this bike. There is no way, easy way back. So that's why he is saying, like, you go and you try. And then, you know, in the Matthew, we, we read this amazing story that he, when he, you know, already resur- he resurrected and he sent his disciples again. And this is the last words that he said. And Jesus came and spoke to them, saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on the earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I command, commanded you. Teaching them all Teaching them to observe all the things I have commanded you. I am with you always, even at the end of the age. Make disciples. And that's, you know, in that statement, like we are, if you're Christian for some times, you're already something just, you have projection in your head. You already have projection. You already know. Ah, uh, making disciples means. Making points, and you know. And some of you do you have this amazing team now from California. Hey, hey guys, welcome back. Some of you. I would, I'm not gonna say like. <laughs> Sorry, I like, as you know, I like joke. So, hello, California. That's like. <laughs> My wife is more excited than you. Like, uh, that's okay. <laughs> the amazing people, they came to serve. And there's few of others that came to serve. And we have a ways of serving. But I want to challenge us. We are ambassadors. But we are not ambassadors of the old kingdom. We are ambassadors of the heaven. And even, you know, if the, the, our Lord is sending you and me, we need to unlearn the old ways. I'm thinking of some of Polish ambassadors abroad. And of some I wouldn't like to even mention. Because they don't represent our country very well. But I would like to challenge all of us that we represent our kingdom. But I don't want to put the pressure on you. Because you know, if we call more, if we pray more, we need you, we need you, we need you, we need you. That's what you need. He doesn't look for the perfect people, but he looks for the people who actually are willing to learn, to talk to the one who sent. Because there's no one, there is no such a country that can send the perfect ambassador anywhere. But if you learn, like, I need you, Lord. I'm willing to do your way. Your way, not my way. It's so hard to unlearn things. I am with you. But you know what? After many years, I'm learning more and more than we as a church, as a Christian, ambassadors of Christ, we can do way more. And you know, guess what? We can shock and surprise the cities, the villages, the places where we are. Why? Because people will see Jesus in you and the way how you do and how you, what you do is such incredible that you will be shocked and they will be shocked and they will give the God praise. This week I met with the one of the vice president and we mentioned to them, guess what, we, need, we have a places for some refugees. She was like, oh, fine. But I said, like, how about we, we receive 70? Two days later, we got the phone call. We have 90. 
What do you think in the city of one million, what they now think of the church who offer the place for 100 people? They already know that we have a place for 1,000 and we have a 1,000. I spent, I talked to someone, do, you know, do we have the money for this? Do we have a place? No, I'm just an ambassador. <laughs> then I have a phone, I can call the one who sent. And the call is called prayer. That's why I call him. There, Father, there is a need. Hey, Mr. President. Hey, Mr. The King. Because it's not about me. It's about him. So on Friday, we talk again. If we can, do we have someone to play the piano? Holy Spirit. Okay. So on Friday, I talked to another lady. She said, you know, one big organization that left the city. The one organization that left the city who are actually giving the food for many people. And they said, we don't know what to do. We don't know what to do. And we, we don't know why they left. And we, we, we were helping the Ukrainian kids in schools. We were helping, you know, Ukrainians on the streets. And we, we, you know, we don't know. So I said, like, how much do you need? So said, I don't know. I'm like, you tell me. Do I have the money? No. You and me, we are just ambassadors. We represent the someone who has everything what we need. That's what it's called to be ambassador. Sometimes we put too much pressure on ourselves because we say, I don't have it, and we don't do anything because we think we should have it. I just, you know, want to mention this again. You are not the savior. You are ambassador of a savior. You are not the healer. You are ambassador of the healer. You represent him, so there is no pressure on you. You don't need to have a pressure. You can bring his kingdom. That's your job. That's your only job. Bring his kingdom. Do his will, not your will. And give me a favor and learn all the things you learn already. The truth is, the longer we walk with God, the more things we learn. But we still have to unlearn many things. The tradition, the culture, so many things. But we are ambassadors. So that's why on Friday, I said, how much do you need? Then I talked to Pastor Josiah. I'm like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Because then the panic comes. But what if? What if? What if God is faithful as we think? What if God is faithful as he's on the, this Bible written? What if? He can do all things. You can carry in his authority. So you don't need to go and say, like, mm, my name is. But actually, you carry his name. And even you have your name. But actually, there's a bigger authority behind you. That maybe the person who you talk to have no idea. But the spirit, the Holy Spirit behind you. Who has all the power, all the authority. Is already changing the place where you are. Start thinking of yourself differently. You are an ambassador of Christ. You are an ambassador of the kingdom of God. I will give you a few things just to challenge your thinking. And if you don't like me, that's okay. Because I call myself my names. <laughs> I believe that this city will be different. It really is different. Do you know why? Because I live here. Because I believe that the blessing comes from me. I believe that our neighborhood is better because we live there. Because of us being so nice. We are maybe nice most of the times. But it's because of the people. Because of him living in us. This country is different because of you who even came maybe here for a short time, long time. Because you came here with a blessing of the almighty God. And if you don't think like this, you know, you are not acting. You won't even try it. But if you just realize the truth, man, I am ambassador. When we 
moved to this building, the whole street start of Ishta was kind of you looking like this. Five years later, I think there's only one building that looks old. All the street has been renovated. Why? I have the answer. Because of us. Because of the church. You might think, how do you know? Because I believe. Because I believe who am I and who we, who, are, who we are as a church. Because we are here not to make people happy, but we're to bring his kingdom. Which means we're making them happy, but actually we're bringing his kingdom here. So I want you to leave this place with a different understanding. But remember that. That first he sent you and you see something great happens. Then the trials comes. And in these trials times, when you think you are nobody, that's the time when you should stand up and say, I am ambassador of the kingdom. When you think, what can you do? In that time, you stand up, I can't do nothing, but I need you now. Then his kingdom come. So then you, after a while, you learn how to ride a bike. It is different. Being ambassador of the kingdom, it's such incredible thing, but we need to not just know. We need to have a revelation. His kingdom. His kingdom. His ways of thinking. His ways of doing. And we are not learning. Being ambassador, you don't learn from ambassadors from this country or other. Just learn from him. Because we should change how we live and not take this what we see but actually bring his kingdom to the things what we see you are called here maybe to be the best even american polish ukrainian british ambassador that will represent even your country somewhere in the best way you can because you know what at the end people don't care what you personally think but they care who you represent so you, you represent the kingdom of god Take the pressure down. Don't put the pressure on yourself. He's the king. You are not. You are just his ambassador. What can happen? Wherever you go, start with something this today. Wherever you go, at home, bring his kingdom to your home, to your street, to your work, to your ministry, to your business, to your school, bring somewhere. And tomorrow, if you felt, that's fine. Disciples, he was teaching them three years, and they were still not perfect, as we read in the <laughs> Acts and the others. But they got something. What did they get? Authority. And it's not their authority, but his authority.